recording yeah okay so hi guys uh we are here for the progress report on the idm project uh so i'll be the lead this time not andre um uh, and uh, andre souza already um <laughs> already volunteered to be the note taker uh, of this progress report so um, I'll ask everyone to put their names into the list of attendees. I think everyone already did, uh, if I'm counting right. So that's nice. So um, everyone can can add something to the agenda for us to talk about, if you want, more than what we already <laughs> have here. Um, so uh, let's start with a round of intros and updates. Um, the first one is Andre Solo. Okay, hi guys. For the for the last sprint on the second week, I was on vacations. Uh, on the first week, I was working on several pages that were still a work in progress and this revision with the team. Uh, so I, I came back the last uh, last day yesterday, and uh, the next step for me and and considering this sprint will be the the homepage. Uh, uh, considering all the current components that we have predicted on style guide. Look to the pages and user flows already already designed and see what we can use as an overview for the home page. Uh, I need to design the single page, which is the website of the app. Uh, understand how how the how will, what will be the path for this, what we want to communicate, and how to sell the app for the end users. Uh, another thing to 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 accomplish on on this sprint will be the initial screens for for the app with the loading and the error states and also work on the Apple page. Uh, and yeah, for me, for th this week, those will be the three main tasks. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, let, let me just say something. Uh, Paulo, could you share your screen so, and follow through the list uh, of people? For, for instance, when Andres started talking, okay, okay. it will be okay. nice to see um, just his share summary of, yeah. It. Actually, I didn't say in progress right now, which was something that I started on the on the previous weeks. Uh, it was the syncing status, which is the data replications for the app sidebar and the profile page, and the sign prompt, which is using the same components that we have already used for the authentication prompt. And yeah, thank you. So Thanks. you have concluded the vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the last week. <laughs> So thank you, Souza. Uh, the next one on the list is actually me. So hi, guys. Um, so during this sprint, uh, this sprint was actually shorter uh, since we had some holidays here in Portugal, like Easter and the uh, Liberty uh, Day. So uh, also some people had uh, a few vacations. Uh, so these sprints uh, actually have uh, a little, uh, some days um, less than the other sprints, so keep that in mind. Uh, so what I concluded at this sprint, um, in the div IPID module, I implemented uh, get DID method, where you get your DID based on a master key. This doesn't mean that the identity is created or that the document actually exists, but what would be your DID based in a master key that you provide? Uh, also, I implemented some validation of documents integrity. So basically, you could actually resolve a DID, but that DID could resolve a document that would not be uh, a DID valid document uh, without uh, specific must have properties uh, that uh, DID documents must have. So basically, we are currently. Um, we are now checking if the document is valid, and if it's not, we actually throw an error saying that, okay, we can't resolve this because uh, we actually didn't get a valid document. Also, we, uh, the, I did some, uh, some, some, some tweaking on the, er on the errors where um, we tried to resolve something, and it wasn't very... Uh, obvious that uh, it failed due to not finding the document or that the ID, the, the ID was invalid. So now that is actually uh, better. So uh, I also uh, changed something in the human crypto keys. Uh, the, the module that we were using uh, were actually um, 
was actually using web workers uh, if uh, we were on the web. Uh, but we actually wanted to support uh, the, the generation of the RSA keys without the use of web workers. So we actually had to uh, do a work around this, uh, but uh, it's working now. So I also, uh, this print, uh, did some stuff in the IBM wallet. I changed, I changed some methods to be synchronous. Uh, so how uh, we did this, we are actually um, doing some load of the store of the storage uh, in the beginning, so that uh, after that, um, the, the some calls uh, are now synchronous. So we are already have some stuff in memory, so that uh, the calls don't take uh, too much time. Uh, we are, we also changed the storage uh, to use level DB. We were using local storage, but we are now using uh, level DB, and. Uh, I also implemented a way to uh, store data, uh, but uh, encrypted data. So we, we are now uh, encrypting the stuff that we are writing in the, in the storage. Uh, I didn't uh, finish uh, my last, um, uh, the, the, um, the story that I was supposed to finish in the last sprint. I'm currently uh, missing uh, just one thing. So I was, going to implement the identity scope in the IDM wallet. I already implemented the, the create uh, identity, the import identity, and I also created a, a new method uh, that we called peak, where we can check if uh, the identity already exists. Um, currently, I'm uh, finishing the remove method. Uh, in the next sprint, I will uh, uh, um, R&D about the modeling data on RBTV, uh, credentials, apps, and sessions. And uh, I will also implement the profile, uh, verifiable credential with a replication. Um, and I think that's it for me. So. Let me just uh, clarify mm -hmm. a little thing to follow. Um, yep. the, the, um, the storage encryption, encryption that you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, is encrypted with the locker with the locker uh, secret uh, secret yes. lock yes. correct yeah. yes so we we are using the the secret um, that we have uh, in the locker to encrypt the the data on the on the on, that we are going to to put in the storage um, and we are using a a e s g c m algorithm to do it all right uh, also uh, you mentioned that you changed the storage to the ODB. Yes. And I think I think uh, it will be useful to to explain why. Okay, can you can you explain? Uh, okay, so basically uh, we changed to level DB since local storage was not um, really the best uh, kind of way to to store something. Um, we were thinking of using um, uh, index DB, and uh, level DB already provides us that functionality. Uh, and we are also using a, a package called Level that also implements Level DB to be used both in Node.js and also in browsers. So that will be one thing that uh, we, we might want in the future. Currently, we, we are only supporting the browser, but in the future, that might be beneficial for us. Yeah, and also I think uh, one of the reasons for us to move uh, from level DB, sorry, from the local storage to level DB, you, uh, was to use the um, the range queries or yeah. the alphabetic yeah. alphabetic uh, range queries, mm -hmm. or lexicographic queries yeah. that the level DB gives us. Yeah. Right. So uh, yes. So basically, uh, I can give you an example. Uh, if we have multiple identities, the identities are stored with a with a prefix and uh, with an hash of the ID. Uh, so basically, the key is um, the key of an identity is identity slash uh, the the hash of the ID. And uh, to fetch it, we are so making a. Um, we are reading from the storage every key that starts with that prefix. So that is one of the, the advantages of using level DB. Yeah, it's something like that. So, yeah. Uh, also, the next one in the list is Pedro Miguel Essies. Hi, everyone. Um, so, the last sprint. Can you please just. Okay. 
And so last sprint, I did finish type select and type option components. You have the link there if you want to check it out. Um, I also fixed some, some bugs, some problems that we had on flow model contents component. Um, you have both PRs. Um, you have the links for the, the PRs. Um, I've also implemented the avatar component that I was needed. I was needing it for the, the create identity user journey. That what is I am currently uh, doing, um, and I will finish it uh, very soon, and, and I will also demo it um, later in this meeting. Um, and the next steps for me are so the next step for me is implement edit profile page, and that's mainly it for for this sprint. Okay, thank you, Pedro. Uh, the next one on the list is. Domingues GM. <laughs> hey guys. Uh, so in the past sprint, I finished doing the setup blocker user journey, which I uh, actually showed you in the past call. Uh, you have the link to the closed PR uh, in the document. I also fixed some minor bugs that we had uh, in some components defined in the web UI kit for Nomius. Uh, in progress during this sprint, and, and I will still be working on this, is the import existing identity user journey. I have uh, a few steps of the process that I have completed, but I still have some stuff that, that needs to be finished. And after this, I will be implementing the profile page. And that's pretty much it from my side. Okay, thank you, Gilles. The next one is Satazar. Yeah. So, yeah. So, in terms of what I concluded, I concluded um, a module to render loading uh, error and success states related to the, to the promises in React. So, this was useful for us because we have a lot of asynchronous operations. For instance, the setup blocker is a flow. You have the passphrase validation that happens asynchronously. You also have the the save password that happens secretly and all of that. So we needed an um, intuitive way and an easy way to express that, that state of saving and um, pending saving saved and some error occurred in the, in the user interface. So I've implemented that model. You have the link there if you, if you want to check it out. Um, also, as part of one of the tasks that I had in the last sprint, which was to structure the Nomius web app, um, we gave birth to a new module called React EDM uh, Wallet, uh, which basically is uh, the React bindings for the IBM Wallet, so that we can easily use the IBM Wallet functionality inside the React web app. So we have implemented that model. You have that. You have the repo uh, there if you want to check out the code. Um, also, I have done miscellaneous work. Uh, I've done a lot of fixes to the Nomius Web UI kit. Um, which is uh, our style guide, uh, implementation of our style guide. And also I've improved the setup blocker use journey with the help of Geo. Um, and that is a lot, of, a lot of code reviews and uh, also some minor discussions. In terms of uh, in progress, uh, I'm still finishing the strengthening of the Nomis web app, which uh, is a carryover of the last sprint. Um, but I'm, I'm already, I'm almost finishing it. I just need to finish the integration of the React DM, uh, DM, uh, there's a typo there. If you could fix it, uh, all yeah. it's IDM uh, wallet, not module, uh, in both in both places. Anyway, uh, I finish into, I'm finishing finishing integrating uh, that model, and also I'm finishing the app skeleton and folder structure, because at the moment the folder stru structure is kind of flaky because we just wanted to get things started. Now it's the time to properly structure the app in terms of the folder structure, um, and I'm, I know I'll I'll be finishing that in a couple. Of and next steps. Uh, in terms of what I'm doing next, um, I'm implementing the identities list on the sidebar. So that, now that we have the create and import almost ready or partially ready in the wallet, I'm now able to list my identities that are in my wallet and render them in the sidebar on the left so that we can select each identity and then go to the profile page. Uh, and also, I'm implementing the, a few other extra functionality on the bottom of the sidebar, such as the, the, the notifications placeholder and the cog or settings placeholder. I think I, I, I've not um, 
I, we haven't shown the designs yet, uh, Sosa, but probably uh, we will in the future once it's, it's implemented. Anyway, I think, oh yeah, I have one more, two more things. So I will help um, Paulo in their research and development about how to, how to model the data on RBTB, so the credentials, option sessions. We hope, we hope to get that sorted out in the, in the next days. And finally, I will help also Paulo to implement the referral credentials um, management. So ability to create, uh, remove and update my credentials, including, including the identity profile credential that contains your name and your, your um, avatar or photo, your nationality and so on and also be able to replicate them among, amongst all the devices that we have associated. And I think that's it for me. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, we answered the question. No questions. So I think we can move on to the next person on the list. And the next one is Jim. Hi, Jim. You have any plates, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no updates, I'm just... Uh, uh, listening to what you guys are working on. So. Okay. We yeah, also we are very glad to have you here, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for passing by. So, um, the next on the list, uh, we have some demos. So, Pedro will do a demo of the Create Identity User Journey that he's working on right now. So, please, dem Pedro, can you demo it? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I need to share my screen. Wait a minute. Oh, you need to stop to share your screen. Yeah, that was a, what I was about to say. <laughs> okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, I need to remove this from here. Can you see it? Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, we can, okay. Okay, 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 sorry. Um, so what I'm about to, to show you is uh, the new identity uh, user journey when you, when you want to create a, a new identity. So when you click um, on create new identity, um, or, or sorry, yeah, create new identity. You can either create it or import a new, uh, an existing uh, identity. And um, here <laughs> you, are, you are seeing illustration, but you will see uh, later a, a fancy illustration made by, or designed by, by Andres Souza. Um, but the, the step that I, am, that, that I am doing is this one that uh, is the step that will allow you to, to create your identity. Um, so you can choose your the type of identity that you are creating. So I will choose a person because I think I am a person. Um, then you can click continue, and now you can you can fill uh, this text input with your name. And I, I don't I don't think you saw it coming. So if I if I start. Um, writing my name, you can see here the, the initials of my name appearing on the, the, the avatar uh, component. Um, you can also choose a, a photo. I will put some fruit. Okay, so it's random, I swear. Um, then you can click continue to the next step of this user journey. That is, you will set up your device. And as you can see, this step was um, automatically inferred um, so you can see that I am using my laptop and also the device name was automatically uh, filled and, and it, it, it is uh, Pedro's laptop but you can you can change it you can change it and if, if we predict it wrongly you can also change your device type. So let's suppose that I was using my desktop, you can continue and change it again to desktop. And this is the, this is the, the, the last step. Um, so then I will click continue and this will create uh, the, the identity that it's not ready yet, um, but it will be very soon as Paulo said. Um, so this is the current status of 
create uh, identity identity user journey. Right, Does anyone, anyone have any questions? Yeah. So so when when uh, I hit continue on that last screen, it will okay. show me like a loading a loading saying that it's creating an identity, and then I'm yeah. ready to go. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Ah. That's right. I, I forgot to mention that. So you are here. So when I click continue, yeah, you'll yeah, see a small button. loading, a loading. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not working now, but you'll see a loading button. Um, sorry, a, a loading screen, and then uh, a it's 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 actually a, a feedback screen. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. All right. Okay, thank you, Pedro. So, does anyone have some more questions for Pedro about the demo? No? So, I think we can move on. I'll share my screen. Just a moment. Are you guys seeing my screen now? Yeah. So, yeah. I think the last thing we uh, have on the agenda uh or the one of the last things are questions so does anyone have questions to ask to anyone on the list of attendees i don't have a question but i have a suggestion for for uh pedro so to to avoid that a uh, disable uh bug that that i have that i have saw so you could use the react final form uh to get the consistent behavior of all the validations uh, yeah, uh, being correct, sure. then the, the button is enabled and vice versa. If there's any error, the disable the button should be disabled. So it's really straightforward to use the, the final form. Just a suggestion, not a question. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I will change it uh, to, to use the, the React final form library, yeah. Okay, so I don't think anyone has, it, has uh, more questions. So I think we can move on. So yeah, do you guys have any, <laughs> do you guys want to say anything? What are we going to do? Uh, or some actions that we need to, to take from now on? <laughs> no, just a, a small comment, which is uh, the next sprint is, is very important because we will get um, deep in the, how the verifiable credentials will work out here and also how can we store them and replicate them. This will be a huge milestone for us to, to get it right. Um, and I hope, really hope that uh, the next sprint or half of the next sprint will have that implemented so that we can really get a sense of how things work out in the, in the refile conventions, gluing with IPFS and, and B2B uh, and possibly or B2B to provide us the, the, the replication model. So I will, I really, I'm really excited to see how those things come together. To life. Yeah. Okay, so I think we can finish this progress report. Thank you, Jim, for passing by. So see you in two weeks. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Yeah.